Since October, Jewish communities around the world have mobilized in solidarity with Palestinians, calling for an end to Israel's brutal campaign in Gaza. Here in the United States, record numbers of American Jews have joined anti-occupation groups like Jewish Voice for Peace and If Not Now in some of the largest demonstrations for Palestine that we have ever seen. Many have noted that even before October 7th, a growing number of Jewish people across the diaspora have been questioning not just the actions of Israel's government, but the very idea of a Jewish state especially one that comes at the expense of Palestinian lives, Palestinian freedom, and Palestinian self-determination. So are we seeing a significant shift within Jewish communities when it comes to Israel and Palestinian liberation? And is there an opportunity for lasting change? Joining us to discuss is Rabbi Alyssa Wise, founder of Rabbis for Ceasefire and former co-executive director of Jewish Voice for Peace. And we're also joined by Eva Bargwart national spokesperson for If Not Now. I want to thank you both for joining me up front. Uh, Rabbi, I'm going to start with you. Uh, you have said since October 7th, Jewish anti-Zionist organizing against genocide has erupted on an unprecedented scale. Uh, Peter Beinart of Jewish Currents predicts, quote, questioning the idea of Jewish statehood will be a current in American Jewish life that it has not been since the American Jewish Zionist consensus was established in the 1940s. Uh, you've been a leader within the Jewish left for decades. Is this like a, a, a turning point when it comes to the question of Israel? I think so, for sure. Uh, one of the things that we've seen in this time is that the organizing that actually been happening for decades is coming to fruition, right? Mm. So I think that what's happening right now in the Jewish community is there's a calling of the question, right? Who are we on a moral mm. and communal level? And how far are we willing to go to defend Israel and the Jewish state, you know, and I think for a lot of people who have not yet um, been called off the sidelines on this question, they're being called off now because there's no way to be neutral on this question. You either are uh, standing against uh, the mass slaughter of Palestinians in Gaza or you're for it. There's really not anywhere in between. Eva, uh, research shows that uh, younger American Jews are becoming increasingly critical of Israel. Uh, even before October 7th, uh, there was a growing generational split between the American Jewish community when it comes to Israel and the occupation. Uh, why do you think we're seeing this generational divide now? I think there are a couple of reasons. I mean, the things that many young Jews are taught growing up, um, the sort of mythology um, that the, the, the is, is successive Israeli governments have required to um, be able to claim Jewish support around the world, um, which they've needed, depended on for their foreign policy. Um, that mythology is dependent on Palestinians not being fully human. And then young Jews go to college with Palestinian peers, or they follow young Palestinians on social media. In this moment, they see um, Palestinians broadcasting on Instagram the genocide that they are going through at the hands of the Israeli government. Um, and there's a shattering that happens of all of the different mythologies of like a land without a people for a people without a land, um, the IDF being the most moral army in the world as IDF soldiers right now are posting videos of the war crimes they're committing on social media. Um, and young Jews are saying, wait a second, the values that we were raised with of justice and equality are totally incongruous with this and we refuse to check them at the door um, when it comes to the Palestinian people. Um, I was raised with you know, an overwhelming amount of Holocaust education. Mm. Um, I feel very, very clear on what has happened to so many Jewish people um, during the 20th century. And so it should not be a shock to anyone that I'm out in the streets resisting what I see um, as an attempt to wipe a people out. What was I taught in my Jewish education, if not the ability to recognize an attempt to wipe a people out when I see it? And that's why thousands of young Jews are in the streets right now. Rabbi Weiss, in October, you founded Rabbis for Ceasefire. Mm -hmm. uh, you have said that Jewish teachings actually demand an end to Israel's onslaught in Gaza. Uh, can you explain what you mean by that? Mm. Well, I mean, the truth is, one can approach the sacred text of the Torah um, with any lens, right? So we at Rabbis for Ceasefire choose to read it um, to pull out its ethical and moral core. And when we do that, what we see is that the most sacred obligation that there is for people of faith, Jews and not just Jews, Christians, Muslims, everyone, is the idea that all people are made in the image of the divine. And what that means is that we must treat each person as sacred and each life as sacred. 
And so if you follow down that road, right, if that's your central spiritual obligation, then how does this massive slaughter in Gaza, how does the denial of food and water and medicine destroying hospitals where, you know, the humanitarian crisis, like, it, you can't even begin to, like, wrap our heads around it, right? It's such a desecration of the divine. And for us at Rabbis for Ceasefire, we pull on these threads of Jewish tradition. Let me tradition. just push back a little bit. Somebody's going to say, that's abstract, though, right? There are actual people dying. 1,139 Jews died on October 7th. And there's the abstract question, but then there's the, the, the literal and immediate urgency of protecting Jewish lives right now in Israel. What do you say to those people? I think that it's a mistake to think about the Hamas attack as an anti-Semitic attack. I think the Hamas attack was an attack that was targeting Israelis and the Israeli state for decades of dispossession and occupation and apartheid. And so it's part of Israel's project has been to completely conflate Zionism and Judaism. So we are meant to understand that anything that Israel does, they do kind of as the Jew in the world. But Israel's not a Jew. Israel's a state. And they need to be um, dealt with and treated as any other state would with the same accountabilities. And I think that when it comes to we understand what is our, oblig our moral and spiritual obligations in this time is, you know, as the Persian poet Rumi put it best, of I've come into the world to these see this, the sword dropping from their hands, even at the arc of their rage, because we understand there's just one flesh to wound. And that's the idea. There's just one flesh. You can't kill Palestinians and torture Palestinians in the way that Israel's doing and not think that that doesn't also cause injury, whether physical or moral and spiritual, to the Jewish people. And as rabbis, we feel an obligation. Uh, we took on a responsibility when we became rabbis to serve the ethical um, core of Jewish people. And, it, and we wouldn't be doing our jobs if we stood aside um, while Israel commits these heinous war crimes. So we're in a moment a moment of great uh, public awareness, outrage, pain, uh, and considerable organizing, specifically in the American Jewish community. Um, do you see us building on this, on this and, turn, and it turning to a full-fledged movement? Mark, I think this is definitely a turning point. In the days after October 7th, the thing that was happening in the streets were that American Jews, many of whom had lost Israeli friends or relatives on October 7th, um, people who were murdered in that attack, um, as well as Palestinians who had had relatives murdered in the decades before and in the weeks and months since, um, were together in the streets saying, we will not be divided from each other. Mm. Our safety and our futures are tied together. This is not about sides. This is about humanity um, and a, a, whether or not we can have a shared future um, as humanity. Um, and and against um, a U.S. foreign policy that was you know, sending, sending bombs to the Israeli government ostensibly on behalf of Jews, with Jews in the streets alongside Palestinians saying, absolutely not. Um, this is the total and complete breakdown of the idea that you can have Jewish safety at the expense of Palestinians. And the alternative is emerging in the streets where people are saying, Actually, what we need is equality and justice and freedom for everyone. Um, we need safety for everyone, and that's how we'll secure a thriving future for all. Mm. Rabbi Wise, what do you say? You know, one of the things that I'm watching carefully now in the past couple of weeks is how more and more people are calling for ceasefire, right? Um, those who have stood on the sidelines for a long time, right? It's been very troubling to see that it's not just the right wing, but the middle, um, the center of the Jewish community has um, gone along with this war. Um, you know, they, a lot of liberal organizations attended the war rally that happened in November where John Hagee of Christians United for Israel spoke and at a certain point the the crowd was chanting no, no ceasefire, right? But somehow that is more palatable than being on the side of peace, right? And they have stood against it. So I think that the, the reckoning um, that is happening in the Jewish community is going to take years to resolve. But I think those that are calling for ceasefire now are doing so very carefully to not align themselves with the broader peace movement. And I think they do that at their own peril. Because in this time, up until this point, there has been... Um, 
at least within, for example, the Christian community, a kind of what Mark Ellis dubbed an ecumenical deal, where in exchange for forgiving Christians for the guilt of their role in the Holocaust, um, Christians go along with support for Israel. But this is a time of breaking of that because there is a moral limit. Right? Those kinds of commitments can only go so far. But when Israel crosses a line, which as they've w gone way beyond crossing a line at this point, um, people are no longer going to be willing to stay silent on their critique of Israel, which the Jewish community demands um, for peace and interfaith relationships. So I think we're going to see a total reworking of the ways uh, that alliances are working across faith, across race, across movement um, in the wake of this. I think the whole Jewish community map is going to be redrawn. Eva Bargwart, Rabbi Alyssa Wise, thank you so much for joining me on Upfront. Thank you. Everyone, that is our show. Upfront, we'll be back next week.